Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to quickly run through how to get some cool graphics without having to sit and wait for a render for three hours. So the first step is we've just got this Rhino model that I've provided down in the description and what we're going to do is we're just going to change a couple settings from the default rendered um, view in Rhino and then move into Illustrator and Photoshop to get things a little more interesting. So the first thing I want to do is turn down the intensity on the sun so we can actually see your model because right now it's a little too bright and you're starting to lose these edges and sort of um, lose the, the bounds of the project. So now that we've got that a little bit lower we can move on to looking at the shadows more. So. These are just the default shadows for rendered mode in Rhino. And so if we take a look at what the settings are, we can turn up the skylight quality a bit, um, fine tune our edge quality just so it's a little bit crisper. Um, and those are the main changes I would make. You could also, if you wanted to, um, change the color of the shadows, but we're gonna look at um, some more creative ways of introducing color that offer a little more flexible, but are similar to changing the shadow color in just a minute in um, Photoshop and Illustrator. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and do a view capture to file and get this image exported. And so these shadows are just one of two things we want. Um, the second thing is the line work. So if we put this back into shaded mode, then we can do a quick make 2D. We want to make sure we're maintaining the source layers, scene silhouette, and then grouping the output. So you can go ahead and do that, and then just export to an Adobe Illustrator file. And then we'll move into Illustrator. So here we have all of our line work. What we want to do first is throw the shadows behind it and get this sized appropriately and then just move this down to the bottom layer. So once we've done that, um, here from here you can fine tune your line work a little bit, um, maybe get some more variety in the line weight. It's not going to be a huge focus at the moment. And the next thing we're going to do in Illustrator is an image trace. And I prefer the six colors, at least for these um, monochrome images. Um, and so once this does its thing, then we'll move on to the next step, which is looking at introducing some hatches to the model. Okay, so we've got that. The next thing you want to do is make a new layer. So we've got this layer here and we're going to lock our rendering and then select all of these images, select all of these, this line work. And then we're going to copy this into our new layer on top in the same spot like so. So now that we have all of this line work, what we want to do is select all of it and then use a live paint bucket group and to do that you just hit K and then click within to create these outlined shapes that allow you to add some color or hatches really easily. So for hatches we're going to come up to swatches down to libraries select um, here at patterns and then basic graphic textures and what that gives us is just some basic graphic textures and we can use that to add a little bit more depth to our image. So for example, we can take the circles and use those for the walls, or maybe these circles, yeah, for the walls. Um, give the door its own hatch, some unique hatches for the windows. So there you've got your hatches and then turn your line work on beneath it and that is the extent of what we are going to do in Illustrator. So you can go ahead and save that file and then come over to Photoshop and then we can open the original PNG in Photoshop 
like so. And what we want to do is we want to come up to File, Place Linked, and then place the line work drawing that we have. All right, so now that we've got this, we can just go ahead and scale it up and get it lined up with what we already have. So what we're gonna use this layer for mainly is for masking. Um, and so to get started with that, we're gonna come back and take this image we have from Unsplash and throw that in behind our line work like so. And so the first step is we want to hold command or control and click the layer thumbnail, come back to our line work and mask out all of the all of the background of that work. So now that we have this, we can fine tune it a little bit, maybe adjust this just a tiny bit so we can get more of our line work from Illustrator in. Like so. So now that we have our model and our image masked, what we want to do is refine this masking so that it looks a little bit less just like an image slapped on top of another image. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to try to roughen up the edges of this masking a little bit. So here we've got this grass brush and we're just going to try and roughen up these edges and there's no exact science to this it's just a matter of sort of feeling it out seeing what feels right and going from there okay so now that we've got that edge roughened up a little bit <clears throat> we can give some attention to this background so obviously there's a bit of a aesthetics uh, disconnect between our cabin and the background. So the first thing I want to do is drop down the saturation and then we can come up to filter, um, stylize and trace contours. And what this is doing is just sort of trying, it's similar to image trace in that it's converting um, an image to a black and white line work. And so we just want to sort of fine tune how, like where we want some of this detail to give it more of this hand-drawn look. So I think maybe about there it looks pretty good. And then we can make a copy, set that to multiply, and then come back and change where these, gra where these, um, these contours are. Do it again. Get some more detail in the sky, I think, is what we're going for here. And then one more time, just to try and get some more up in this upper right corner. Let's see. I think like so. So now we have all of these um, lines, and we've got this cool kind of hand drawn look. And then we can just make a new layer come to our background color, pick a color of your choosing, thinking something kind of like that, and then go ahead and fill that layer with that color, and then just sort of figure out which blending mode you like, depending on what look you're going for. Um, so, yeah, at this point, there's a lot more freedom in terms of how you go about these finishing touches and seeing what it is that you like and messing with the blending modes and the opacity. I kind of like this. Um, so yeah, that's sort of a super quick way of spicing up your images a little bit and without having to wait forever for a rendering. So yeah, hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.